Awesome. Uh, thanks for having me. This is a great turnout. And uh, we're Clarify, where we're really creating value by amplifying knowledge. Um, we're using deep learning techniques to understand users' data and really extract the knowledge from it to build new applications. And this applies to so many different areas where media assets and companies are just exploding. Uh, there's one trillion photos taken in 2015 alone. Uh, five trillion photos will be stored by 2017. So this number just keeps exponentially growing. Um, 400 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute. And even higher than that is the, the stat at the bottom, drop cam, those devices that do home security, um, is way more hours, uh, 100 billion frames per hour on the drop cam devices. And in terms of Pinterest, 50 billion pins. And so we're building technology to cope with this data and help companies, like some of them mentioned here, um, be able to uh, understand what their users are posting and provide better applications for their users. And I'll just give you a brief overview of what we do. So we're focused on understanding the visual world. And you can do this on your own time with uh, our homepage. You quickly uh, drag onto the screen. There's a uh, captcha here because we got crawled um, significantly. And um, the image is automatically understood. So we're understanding objects like uh, dog, mammal, etc but also descriptive words like precious or cute or it's looking, um, some actions that are being understood just from the pixels alone of this image. And it handles any type of image. Um, this model understands 10,000 or over 10,000 now different concepts in the world, ranging from objects to descriptive words. And at the same event, actually, uh, in January, we launched video understanding. So I just pasted in a URL to a video. It's being downloaded on our server right now, and it just finished. So this was a three and a half minute video. Um, if you can kind of squint in the bottom corner there, you'll see three and a half minutes. And that took about six seconds to understand. And what we return is much more detail than any human would provide. Um, we're understanding these over 10,000 different concepts throughout a time series of uh, the video. And maybe I'm looking for something like uh, mountains. This video has a lot of mountains. Uh, it's very confident throughout. So if I jump to uh, play the video, I can jump to any scene and see a lot of mountains. But maybe I'm looking for, uh, let's say, snowy mountains. So they only appear in portions of the video. This portion I clicked on did not have them. If I move a little bit later, it jumps to the snowy videos that it's found. So this applies to many different applications and really opens up uh, a whole new generation of applications because the users who would do this type of uh, understanding of the video would have to sit through this in real time. Um, and that would take three and a half minutes um, for that particular video. So this technology is all available through APIs. It looks something like this. This is something our designer sketched up. Um, but I really like it because it's really showing that we're taking neural networks, extracting different pieces out of the image and returning that to you for actionable insights into your media collections. And we, we've had this API out for about a year uh, or so. And uh, I like to, to look at uh, doing surveys and hearing what our developers are, are talking about. And uh, this is just a survey we ran over the weekend um, from some developers using it. And uh, here's one of the quotes. The API was really amazing. The first email I got from you guys I thought was spam because I honestly didn't believe it would work as well as it did. Um, so we were super happy to hear stories like that, um, really enabling their applications. Another one, I thought it was the best thing ever. Um, it's really cool to hear that. And these were actually indie developers really uh, working at hackathons and coming up with new ideas on the spot, only with 24 hours. So, uh, that's why we emailed them first, gave them a, a taste of what to come in the hackathon, and uh, they built some incredible stuff. But we're also working with major companies across the world. So we always get this question, who are we working with? It's not on your website. Do you have any paying customers? Um, yes, we do. And this is a taste of some of them. Um, Vimeo wants to understand their video catalog so that their users can search and find exactly what they're looking for. Vodafone is building applications to reach 400 million users across the globe. 
Pixar has 250 million users of their iPhone and Android apps that help edit photos and make them beautiful. Trivago in the travel domain wants to understand whether they're taking pictures or users are uploading pictures of uh, the ocean or the uh, bedroom or the lobby of hotels. Style Me Pretty in the wedding space wants to understand user-generated wedding albums so that other buyers, or sorry, other viewers can get inspirations when they're planning their wedding. You can see all these different applications are across different verticals. And that's our goal at Clarify, to build deep learning systems that can scale and handle different verticals across the globe. Um, the one that you might not have heard of on, on the screen is Eye Inside. And that's uh, an application in the medical domain. So they have a really cool device that attaches to the back of a cell phone and uh, gives you a small lens that looks inside your ear, nose, and mouth. And they attach it to the cell phone to get it out of the hospital so that any person can take it to a nursing home, to a school, or developing countries and help diagnose disease. And we're really inspired by this, and that's why we partnered with them to build medical applications like this that get out to a much more broader audience than what you get in a hospital where you have million dollar imaging devices. So how do we keep up working with companies across the globe and across different um, application areas? So what we spent the last uh, few months on, and this is why we actually missed the, the deep learning um, summit in Boston, is to be able to understand the world, how we talk about it. So you can see there's a new selector on our site and available in our APIs to pick the language that you want to understand images and video in. And we took a step back and looked at what are the most popular languages, how do people want to use this, and what do they really want to get out of the API. So we have a whole list of languages with support in our API and our homepage, all the way from European languages to Asian languages, languages that cover most of the globe. And we're going to continue to improve the coverage here. Um, so we're really excited to announce multi-language support in our API. And it also works on video. You can throw in and understand the over 10,000 different concepts in the world. And we call them concepts um, for a reason, which I'll get into in the further slides. But you can see the same concepts that we saw in English are now understood in all these different languages. This opens up a whole new variety of different applications and allows these major customers of ours and developers across the world to really build new applications. And I like this kind of uh, pictograph. We're all um, uh, across the globe speaking in different ways about the same thing. And you can see in this pictograph, everybody's, every human here is depicted in different ways, but they're really just communicating through spoken language. Um, and that's what we try to do with our new APIs is enable that um, in a unique way. Here's the list of languages covered. There is 21 of them off the start. And you can pass in these identifiers. Um, these are common ISO standards for identifiers. And get the language you want out of our API. So this was kind of joint effort across the company to really step back and think about the way we were tagging things. Um, we had major data sets that were tagged in English words, um, collected from the web, collected from partners, and collected um, through usage of our API. But to, under to solve this problem, it's much more difficult than just doing a translation. And I'll show you examples that it breaks down um, in the next slide. So we really uh, developed some natural language processing algorithms, um, some vision algorithms, and data big data science uh, applications across our data sets to really understand what are the most important um, transitions to make between those English tags into all the different languages? And in doing that, we built a whole knowledge graph um, within Clarify that connects to other knowledge graphs out in the world, like Wikipedia, Freebase, et cetera. Um, but it's our own that is really geared towards this multi-language understanding of the world. And we chose the languages based on popularity and the need of our customers 
And uh, we'll be continuing to improve this. This was literally pushed to production uh, late last night. So um, definitely try it out, play with it, and see how it works for you. So the naive approach to doing this would be taking the uh, English words and translating them directly. And if you look at the example on the left, the word fall for this image, um, if you use something like a, an automatic machine translation service that are available on the web, uh, it would most often output Kadera in Italian. Um, and that means to fall over. So it's not the right meaning of fall, because in English, fall has many different meanings. And you can see that in the example on the right with the word crane. Uh, it also has multiple different meanings. And this happens not only in English, but in different languages, and in many different use cases, um, from nouns to verbs, et cetera. Um, so we have to solve this problem by building this knowledge graph to really get the base level entities um, developed so that we can uh, understand their true meanings and not just the English word that's assigned to them. So now when you get predictions out of our API, you actually get a predict in, predict, uh, sorry, prediction for something like uh, crane the bird or crane the device that lifts things. It has a unique node in our knowledge graph. And then you can ask for that same thing in different languages. Maybe you want it in Chinese or Russian or Italian. And it's dead simple to use. Um, it looks something like this. So if you want to build new applications powered by deep learning, this is uh, three lines of Python code that you need. You import our client. You uh, construct it. You have authentication keys. I have them in environment variables here. And uh, you can simply tag a URL or an image on your computer. And uh, I'll just jump in to show you what that looks like. So if I open up IPython, here's the import stage. Here's the uh, construction. So I have my environment variable set already, so it authenticated. And then it tagged this image. And this is an image I'll just show you quickly um, from our home page. It's this image right here of the train station. And so in English, which is the language I passed in here, EN, you get um, train, transportation, railway, travel, et cetera. But you also get a unique identifier. So this is the connection you can make as a developer to our knowledge graph. You can store these. These won't change. And they give you the flexibility to ask later for a different language or to uh, connect it to your own vocabulary um, so that you, uh, if you don't want all of our different categories, you can uh, subselect them. And you also get a confidence score. And just as easily, maybe I want that in French, um, I can get whatever I'm looking for in French. And that is now available today. So if you're a developer, you can use it today. Um, if you're not, I urge you to sign up at uh, developer.clarify.com. And as a developer, when you log in, you can actually control this on an application-specific setting. So we have different notions of applications. Maybe you have uh, an iPhone app um, and you're globally distributed. You want to launch different versions to different app stores. So you might have an English version. Uh, you might have a different application setting, different credentials for French or uh, Italian. And you can deploy those um, in a very simple way in our UI, select a language for each application, and get it out there um, to your customers. So that is uh, the first peek at uh, Clarify's multi-language support. So thank you for your time. And we're hiring. Um, this was, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Po Sen Wang on our team, who uh, is a deep learning PhD student who uh, graduated a couple years ago from uh, UIUC in, in Urbana-Champaign. Uh, his background is speech and natural language processing. And, and this is one of the applications that you, as a researcher at Clarify, can empower. Um, we're really focused on taking research and building useful applications that solve problems for our customers. Um, so join us. Thank you.